So I actually cannot do anything until all of my morning poops are out. Uh, and it took a few rounds, but I think we're done. I think we're done. So now I can actually start my day. I've made myself something to eat at noon. Yeah, I'm gonna eat and drink a smoothie and get ready to go to the gym. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this week I am filming a week of workouts because I am now on week six of my 12 week training program. So the first four weeks were a different set of exercises and then the next four weeks are another set of exercises. And so I figured why not go ahead and record another one now since it is new. And then I'm gonna do these same exercises every week for the next four weeks. Yeah, I wanna go over just the workouts in this video. And if you're interested in some of the things I eat, I would follow me on Instagram where I share my food a lot uh, or watch just a regular vlog where I also cook a good bit. So I will see you once I've actually put on gym clothes because right now I'm just wearing a big t-shirt because like I said, it took a few rounds, but now we're, f we're good to go. Stomach's empty, intestines are empty. Let's fill it back up. Happy Monday. Every time I'm recording these, just know it's not only to motivate you, but to motivate me. I'm being accountable. I have to actually work out to record this. It works for us both. So it is leg day, happy Monday. I am four years into my weight loss journey, but about two into my fitness journey. I started in 2019 when I moved to Richmond, Virginia and started grad school. My original aim for my weight loss journey was to be skinny, but now my objective is to be strong. Two years into that journey, I decided that I wanted to grow my glutes or my booty and uh, I have made significant progress in that in the last year. So now I am taking a more whole body approach to build the body of my dreams. So uh, I'm currently on six, on the sixth week of my training program. I buy training programs because making decisions makes my stomach hurt. And as a future PhD, I just love taking advice from professionals, okay? Somebody that has specific knowledge to help me, yeah, I'll take it. So I'm currently kind of on a hodgepodge program. <laughs> I was doing the At Booty King program and that was such a great success. And then I tried someone else's, but I did not like it. So I've now done a mix of what I was doing with Booty King with my own added workouts to be more beneficial to me. So I guess I'm low key on my own program, whatever. I don't know, <laughs> but the program I'm on has a five day split, so that means I work out five days a week, where three of those days I work my legs, and two of those days I work my upper body. And if I'm not fully toast from that, then I do a full body day on Saturday. And if I'm a really good girl, I do a 30 minute to one hour walk every single day outside of what I do in the gym. So I begin my leg day with my warm up for mobility and glute activation, and then I get right into my sets.
All right, y'all, happy Tuesday. We're on to upper body and I am having a blast. What I've learned so far from these training programs about progressive overloading and muscle confusion is that you can progressive overload over time and you can even start with your individual workouts. I thought it was some big concept, but essentially, if you have a maximum number of reps to do, say 12 or 30 or whatever, and you get to that number with little difficulty, and by the time you get to number 12, number 30, you're still able to go quickly, then you're not lifting heavy enough. So you go up to the next weight, so if you're at a five, go to a 10, and then you keep going until you feel some difficulty when you get to that last number. When you finally feel difficulty, that's the weight you should be at, and you work with that weight until it becomes easy, and then you move to the next one, and that's how you progressively overload over time. You might be at a certain weight, like a 10 pound dumbbell for a whole month or for two months. And then one day that's really easy and you go to the 15s and then you do 15s for a month and then that's really easy. It's just making sure that you're trying more every single time and putting in intentionality and intensity with your workout so that they, your muscles grow. As you continually do this, you start hitting PRs and next thing you know, you're lifting 100, 150. I ain't there yet, but I know that that's how it's going. <laughs> and then, muscle confusion is just about your body being incredibly adaptable. So for anything we do as human beings, we get a lot of muscle memory for those things. So with dancing, marching, playing piano, you do it a lot, your body adapts to it. So at a certain point in repeating your workouts, because you want to do the same ones for consistency growth, um, but for it to grow, um, I mean, for it to actually be effective, at some point, you have to switch up because if you are doing the same thing, then your body will adjust. That makes the newness of the workouts less beneficial. So a lot of the training programs that you'll find will have it so that it's, if it's a 12-week program, month one has a certain routine for every week, month two has a certain routine for every week, and week three, and, and month three has a routine for every week. The routines all optimize the same areas, but hit them at different points in the schedule so that it switches up often enough to confuse your muscles and not get too adapted to what you're doing. So for example, in the first four weeks, you might do hip thrusts as the first exercise, but then in the second month, you might do them fourth in your set, and you might have step-ups now, and etc. So there's different exercises as the months change, but they're targeting the same thing. That's what muscle confusion is about. And so, as you confuse your muscles month to month, if you just do that swapping off and you do that progressive overloading, growth is the recipe. And oh my gosh, y'all, I lost my gloves. I couldn't find them when I was in here, and then I just couldn't find them at all. So, whatever. Let's just do it. Y'all, y'all, I just have to say, I'm literally over seasoned the fuck out of my yogurt today. Like, I feel like I've made it a few times in my recent vlogs, my favorite yogurt, and I put too much of both. Like, it's literally, like, brown. Like, it's too much. It's too much. So, uh, today's leg workout is going to be sponsored by the rest of these hot chips. <laughs> See you in the gym. <laughs> also, Tory Lanez was sentenced to prison today, so today's workout is also sponsored by my good sis, Megan The Stallion, okay? Play my Meg playlist, period. Period. Play shots fired. <laughs> Fuck you, goofy ass bitches. So, when I switched from going, when my focus was from being skinny to being strong, I realized that there was a really important way to approach how I was entertaining my fitness goals. So if I wanted to build muscle and have it last and not just be a quick fix, I would have to make sustainable changes. And as someone with a PCOS, I would have to make sustainable changes that didn't throw my hormones out of whack in order to accomplish these goals. So exercise is naturally going to increase your stress response. So you want to, or I've learned <laughs> that low intensity exercises so doing my lifting a little slower my movement slowly to in to make sure i'm not hyping up hiking up my heart rate too fast it also helps with the mind muscle connection to move slowly when you're doing your lifting i also only really do low intensity cardio so like dancing pilates walking things that won't hike my heart rate up too high i don't want 
the stress of working out to tax my body so hard that it throws my levels out of whack and then it's harder to recover and stay balanced in my eating and my sleeping. And this is also affected by how and how much how I eat and how much I eat. So if I am making sure that I am eating a balanced diet with enough vegetables, fiber and protein, then I will also make sure that my levels stay at an equilibrium. So that's very important even though I'm working out every day to make sure that I'm doing it smartly in a way that works for my body. She's seen all the signs. I thought you were mine. I was blind. I remember when you were all in for us. I recall when you said you never loved someone like this. Telling me lies. You had someone else. Now you're running back. It was all good till the love gave in. p.m. the clock's behind you it is 5 30 p.m. so it is a very hard sell today to go to the gym <laughs> okay I've had my meetings and I've been doing a lot of work and when I don't do it first thing in the morning it's just such a hard sell but I'm gonna go do it because we're doing this together but I just wanted to admit that aloud because it's true I was real motivated before I real like Bruh, and I still am but also I'm like I know how much work it is and I'm like okay but then I just, I'm on Pinterest right now. Oh, listen, just really quickly, all right? Pinterest and my fit Instagram. I don't really post on my fitness Instagram. I just follow people that motivate me. And that page with the people that motivate me and Pinterest are keeping my fitness journey alive. I literally was on here just procrastinating going to the gym and this came up. Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. So I gotta grab a camera. So let's go to the gym. <laughs> so speaking of things that work for my body, I do take some supplements and vitamins, but not a whole lot at this time. So as far as vitamins, I take vitamin D for bone health and general energy and mood. And then I also take fish oil pills, vitamin pills for my heart health. Those have been omega-3. Omega-3 fish oils have been shown to benefit those with PCOS. So I also take that one. And then I'm kind of taking maca relatively consistency for its hormonal balance benefits, though I'm still looking into how all of that works. And then as far as fitness supplements go, 
I have been taking creatine consistently for some time. I am out of raw creatine, but there is creatine in the pre-workout that I take from one saw. So I'm still taking that daily and that helps with muscle growth and recovery. And then as I mentioned before, protein is incredibly important for this journey. So I do take, I do supplement protein in my diet by making sure I have at least one or two protein smoothies a day. So those are all the supplements I take, things I have to buy to assist in my journey, but these are all assistance. These are things I added a year after I started training to grow my muscles and they're just benefits to what you're already doing. They won't do anything if you're not training. you are training and you're doing all of this training with intensity and you're taking these supplements to aid in your muscle growth and cuff and recovery then you need to make sure that you are also meeting your protein goal that you're eating enough protein to support this goal so when we lift we're tearing our muscles to expand them and they are repaired by being filled with protein so if I'm not meeting the amount good enough for my body weight and my body type and then also my goals then I'm just tearing my muscles with minimal benefit so getting the goal of growing the volume and strength of my muscles means making sure that I'm getting enough protein eating enough protein improves growth and recovery making my results visible more visible faster so I choose my meals based on my protein intake my breakfast, my lunch, my snacks, I am always cognizant of how much protein is in them because that is what is important to me at this stage of my journey. Unfortunately, as life goes, how much access I have to protein depends on my expenses at the moment, you know, that week or that month, and groceries and inflation do be beating my ass, so I'm not always on it, on it with my protein, but I do know the moat when I am on it, when I'm having my shake every single day and I'm meeting all my goals, the ass is fat. <laughs> Okay, so I just do my best based on my circumstances and I'm gracious with myself. I know the impact of the protein and the training will be the same over time. It'll just take longer if I'm not meeting that goal daily, which is totally fine. I literally have my whole life to accomplish the body of my dreams. And since I know that I have my whole life to accomplish the body of my dreams, I really appreciated this fitness journey so far for turning me into a long-term thinker. A lot of the 12-week success stories buy into the quick fix of it all, and I really did too for a long time, but since focusing on body recomposition and building muscle, I've had to think about the literal mechanics of what's good for my body, scientifically, personally, emotionally, and just not what's good for it now, but also what will be good for it in a month, in two months, what is sustainable. I now think about how the sum total of my actions will benefit me and not just today. I know that 12 good weeks is great, but 24 good weeks is next level. And another 12 weeks is next level and it never ever stops being next level. The benefits only compound. If you've heard that analogy in all finance tips, books and classes about how if a young person invests $10 a day in the bank today, they'll have more than someone who started investing the same amount at 45. That works with literally everything. It's a lump sum benefit. The sooner you start, the longer you go, the more you benefit. So I've started now. I'm gonna go for as long as I can, and I'm gonna take you with me. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye, friends.